This video is brought to you in part by the patrons of the Lazy Eyebrow, and from the comments and watch time from viewers like you. Thank you! Well, hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow to part B of the Unicron review! And for clarification, that's the O1 Studio Cell Unicron. Now, myself personally, in the review, I never really took much issue with the planet rings that O1 Studio came with. I thought they did a fairly decent job doing what they do, given how compact they are here, and how nice I felt they looked in robot mode. However, this opinion was before I was lent a set of the Armor MA-01 rings from Leonhardt 2000. This 8-piece ring set comes segmented right out of the box for ease of shipping, so let's get to assembling. First, bring these two sections together and peg them in like so. Next, move that up and slot it into the double end of the middle section. And then, tug the last bit and plug it into the other end of the middle section and you've got one finished side. Adjust parts to the proper angle, get two of them together, and you're ready to go orbital. Next, take off the pain in the butt smaller ring set and pray it doesn't snap on you like mine did for the second time while filming this. Then on the bigger rings, contrary to the smaller rings, you start by plugging into the main port. Next, you plug in the folding piece into the top part and then you repeat for the opposite side. And then getting them to connect to each other is super easy, barely an inconvenience, which again is such a breath of fresh air compared to the stock configuration. You just separate the double-ended bit, get the mono end into position, and then loop the hole around the two other pegs. And there we go. Snap that thing together and you've got yourself a set of Unicron rings. Now, as impressive as this is, it does sort of leave the question, how does one actually display this thing? Well, thankfully, this seems to have been thought of beforehand by Zeta Toys, and probably the reason why the planet comes with two suction effects in the first place, you know, instead of pretending he's a cosmic duck or a big candy or something. So what you do is you basically just take the two cones, rotate one of them 45 degrees, and then you peg them into each other. From there, you put both of them through one of the support pillars on the bottom, and one of them slots over the giant rings, in fact, they're even molded grooves into the round cylinders for easy slotting, and then you wrestle with the whole dang thing until it fits. It's not a fun operation, but uh, it's what you gotta do, basically, because clearances are just ever so much a pain in the butt. And then, there you go, a rickety display option for your planet mode. I personally don't like this. The cut slot feels like the weight of the planet is forcing the plastic apart, and I just don't like how it feels. Maybe it's fine, I don't know, maybe it's not going to break, I'm not an expert, but I personally would rather an actual stand. And since the original stand I designed had the original rings in mind, a full redesign was in order, as just stretching the z-axis was not going to do here. And thus the reason why I was lent this set in the first place. So, this is my new stand for the big rings, the design of which can be found on my Cult's 3D page. I'm not putting this on Shapeways, though, due to the absolutely insane pricing they want for this, but if you feel you absolutely need one, I can custom make them, you just gotta message me for now until I get the website going. So with stand talk out of the way, let's talk about the rings. And man, what an upgrade! Like, these rings add just over double the diameter, and on paper, I felt like that wouldn't be terribly necessary, but in hand, oh man, I was so wrong. Like, they go from the puny space station rings to massive planetary ring system. It's so imposing, and so, well, unicron. Like, they look awesome, and they totally fit what they're going for here. Easily the motor improves upon the most. The Transformers will return after these messages. This episode is also brought to you by Skywarp Sketches 999. Subscribe today. We now return to the Transformers. So then, how does the transition to robot mode fare with these upgrades? Let's find out. We start by undoing all the ring connections, and then we take each half and split it down the middle of the double-ended side, then rotate that around. Extend out the ends and rotate in the connection piece, and you're more or less done, at which point we just then transform the planet like normal. Do I? So here's Unicron with the original heavy metal skeleton wings. And now here's Unicron with the new death metal skeletal wings. And this is like the weirdest thing for me personally. I considered getting this set, but in nearly every video I saw going over this, 
I just felt they didn't look good. Like they were just too clunky and overly big. And in video, it just wasn't doing it for me. And having these in hand, it's like, wow, this is nuts. Like these look like proper wings for the Planet Eater, the Chaos Bringer, the true villain of the 86 movie Unicron. I hope that's being conveyed through this video and that it's not just one of those it looks better in hand situations because this is such an upgrade to the bot as well. Like he looks properly imposing like he should be. Like this is Unicron. So how about some articulation? Well first off, the hinge joint on the shoulder features far more range as it goes from the original single hinge joint to the triple hinge joint of the set, allowing you to go all the way out if that's what you feel like doing. I don't know, maybe he's crying out in agony or something at the loss of his planet-eating girlfriend, and that's what sets him off on a rampage against the Matrix. I don't know, everyone needs an origin story these days, it feels like. Or have him sit a little higher while he talks to a future protege about the prospect of recruiting Sarah Kerrigan. The new range of these wings is most welcome is what I'm really trying to get at here. Surprisingly, they don't sit all that much lower either, which is kind of impressive. Again, maybe it was the videos I was watching, I don't know. But they always felt like the robot mode ring upgrade was so cumbersome, and that it was just parts flying everywhere, and that it was just not fun. But these fit in quite nicely, and the added diameter results in a shallower curve, really making them feel more proportionate to his size. Like, I can't explain that, but this just, it feels right. It's not perfect though, one thing I don't like is that the tips of these things just stop curving at some point and become a straight edge on two out of three of the spires, and this is a consequence of how they transform, and to me it looks a bit janky, but at the end of the day I don't know if that's any worse than the asymmetrical design of the stock rings. So that was the Armor MA01 ring set from Owen Studio, or Zeta Toys wink winking their way into releasing the design anyway despite Haslab saying nay nay. Do I recommend this set? Surprisingly, yeah. If you had have asked me before I had these in hand, I may have only said if you plan on displaying primarily in the planet mode, sure, but if it's a robot mode thing, they're easily skippable, but yeah, these add way more to the robot than I initially expected, and now I'm sort of bummed out that I gotta send these back, which means if I can find them at a reasonable price, I may just pick up a set for myself. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow.